The Honourable Member for Edmonton Riverbend. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Alberta is in the grip of a devastating jobs crisis that is disrupting lives and careers, breaking up families and forcing people to leave. Seeing Alberta's EI numbers and seeing the job numbers each month is heart-wrenching. Since the beginning of 2015, the number of unemployed Albertans has nearly doubled. There are now over 200,000 people looking for work. But what's really sad, Mr. Speaker? There are real people behind these numbers. Thousands of families can't make ends meet. Kids are seeing their parents go to the food bank for the first time. Skilled workers across Alberta are struggling to provide for their families and are being forced to seek opportunities for employment in other provinces and countries, taking their skills with them. Imagine what they're thinking when the Alberta minister says, let's hold hands and get through this together. Losing these skilled workers is another hit that will further weaken our province. More than 24,000 Albertans have already left. Since the financial crisis, Alberta has been the economic engine of Canada. Albertans have worked hard for generations, and all of Canada has benefited from our province's economic strength. The Canadian economy and the growth and prosperity we've come to expect will lag behind until Alberta is strong again. A strong Alberta means a strong Canada, and a strong Canada must include Alberta. Without a clear and targeted plan in place by the Liberal government that specifically addresses the challenges being faced in Alberta, companies will continue to move their business elsewhere, families will continue to struggle, and skilled workers will be forced to line up for EI. Albertans deserve better. As proud Albertans, we want to see the restoration of the province as an economic leader in Canada and a hub for job creation and ingenuity. It is with the Alberta Jobs Task Force that we, on this side of the House, will work with everyday Albertans, struggling families, investors, small businesses and companies to hear their thoughts to develop a plan that will allow the Alberta economy to grow and restore the province to an economic leader in the country. In the past months, our Alberta colleagues have been hosting town halls and roundtables to develop a report that will outline a plan to stimulate and grow the Alberta economy and get hardworking Albertans back to work. In our roundtables and town halls, we listen to the enterprising solutions that Albertans have come up with to get our province back on its feet. In these roundtables and town halls, we hear the stories of those who have been affected by the economic crisis. We will be sharing the stories of hardworking and resilient Albertans who have been affected by the economic downturn. By sharing their stories, we'll remind the Liberal government and those outside of Alberta that behind these numbers are real families having to make tough decisions on whether to put food on the table, pay their mortgage to keep a roof over their family's head. Our work will report back with real policy solutions. We're ready to roll up our sleeves and help out Alberta. My question to the Minister is, why is this Liberal government continuing with things like a carbon tax, continuing with the CPP in increases on small business, and continuing to turn a blind eye to Alberta? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Infrastructure and Communities. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. President, Mr. Speaker, the government is aware of the challenges that Albertans face. We stand with Albertans and offer them our wholehearted support. And we are moving forward together with Albertans. You'll know, Mr. Speaker, that we committed to doubling investments in infrastructure over the next 10 years, and that's exactly what we're doing. These investments will help create good jobs and promote economic growth that is sustainable all across the country. This is particularly important in Alberta. On September 1st, the governments of Canada and Alberta announced the signing of a, of a bilateral agreement that will provide the province with more than a billion dollars in funding through two new federal programs, the Public Transit Fund and the Clean Water and Wastewater Fund. Mr. Speaker, the federal government will be contributing up to 50% of this funding. In other words, a little over $543 million for these programs. And currently, the government has an initial list of projects for these two funds and has announced a funding, funding for 49 public transit projects in Edmonton and Calgary. 
We've also announced funding for 17 projects having to do with drinking water and wastewater all across Alberta. These projects will allow residents to enjoy clean drinking water, and 10 of these projects are currently underway. We've also worked to accelerate the funding that is available through the new Building Canada plan. To date, 63 projects worth a total of $900 million in federal funding have been approved. This includes, notably, um, projects to reduce flooding in Bragg Creek and Cougar Creek, as well as an upgrade of sewer and wastewater systems in Peace River. Mr. Speaker, from 2014 to 2019, Alberta should receive over a billion dollars in funding through the renewal of the gas tax fund. For the period of 2016-2017 alone, Alberta municipalities will receive more than $219 million through the gas tax fund to fund uh, local infrastructure projects. In addition, we're working very closely with Alberta to engage all residual funding as soon as possible so that we can help create job creation in that province. Furthermore, Mr. Speaker, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the federal government's announcement to go forward with two pipelines which will protect the environment and also stimulate the economy and create jobs. Uh, we approved the Trans Mountain project and the Enbridge Line 3 project. This will create over 22,000 new jobs, Mr. Speaker. And this will also lead to significant investments in many sectors of the economy. So that will promote uh, growth in the uh, Canadian economy and the Albertan economy. And it will provide better access to new markets for the province. I should also mention, Mr. Pres uh, Mr. Speaker, that these decisions were made following an open and inclusive process in that included consultation with Aboriginal peoples. The projects we announced on Tuesday will create new middle class jobs and opportunities while protecting the environment. So we are here for, the Albert for Albertans and so is the Minister and so is the entire government. The Honourable Member for Riverbend. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd be remiss to, to ignore the, the last part of the, uh, the member's speech where he talks about pipelines. I, I think it's, uh, it's important to note that those jobs are down the line. Those aren't jobs right now that uh, Albertans need and, and want. Uh, so although those are important and, and applaud the, the government for doing that, they're not the jobs that we need. Doubling the infrastructure investment so that the, the member spoke of, he, he brought up the, the fact that in September is when they did it. The Prime Minister met with the, the uh, um, Premier of the province back in February. Uh, so why did it take all from February to September to announce that funding? Because that was an entire construction season that we lost and the, the, the Minister on the other side of the House should know that, being from Alberta. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Well, Mr. Speaker, this gives me the opportunity to say how the Minister of Infrastructure is working very seriously for Alberta, just like the Government of Canada is. And I'll repeat, Mr. Speaker, we have a bilateral agreement that will provide more than a billion dollars for public transit, for water, wastewater to the province. We're working to accelerate funding through the new Building Canada plan. There's more than a billion dollars for the renewal of the gas tax fund. We approved the pipeline projects, Mr. Speaker, and that's not all. We're going to continue working for Alberta because we are aware of these issues. The member knows very well that um, Alberta is going through a difficult period, and we stand with them, and we will be doing so in the future as well.